six uh, discharge at Hunt Correctional. You know what I forgot, Juan? I didn't bring any sampling bottles. Bayou, bro, alligator bayou, and then Lake, uh, Spanish Lake. That's where all this goes to.
Okay. All righty. Walking on it? Yeah, a little bit, and then finally came in. I said, I know. It just takes a little time because it's like you can take all these snapshots when you do it on video. You have to you have to let it give yourself some time and you gotta make sure you can go from point to point to point. But uh actually with this I'm, you can hear like the wind blowing in the headphones. And I had it zoomed in, I was going across. It looked like some out of like a Mad Max movie, you know, the, the desert or whatever. Pretty gross. <laughs> you might be in violation one, I'd watch that. Yeah, I tell you, my job takes me to all the fancy places. <laughs> Are we taking too long? You want to get a move on? Oh, no, take all the time you need. Yeah, that, that's going to be all right there. Yeah. Just trying to shine, shine some light on the problem. Yeah. All right, let me... 
me just take Well, I've went to a movie before. It was a scratch and sniff movie. They gave you a card, and they nasty, nasty smells. Smells like perfume, liquor, uh, all sorts of things you could imagine what they were. But each individual one would have been okay because it's like it'll flash a number on the screen, you scratch it, and you smell it. It's like smell of it. But what happened was everyone was scratching them, and by the time it got to like the eighth or ninth scratch off, all the smells were coming up. I had to leave. It was so sick. Ninety-one when I first filed that complaint on them, they was running some kind of plant in there, a soap plant, and the stuff it was this ditch ran almost blood red. It was red as pipe, and you would see the the nutra and the turtles and stuff swimming around, and their eyes was completely glazed over from the, the chemicals that they was putting in the water. It was just blind. In ninety-one. Yeah. And huh. Yeah. After the complaint, I filed a complaint. They, they shut that plant down. Someone coming? Put it down to the corner if you want to see it. What's this? Is that them making military maneuvers? Yeah, they look like the basic training unit or something. All the old waste food and stuff in the, from the prison, they just dump it over in that pile over here. Let me push over here. Excuse me. Oh, my God. If you get an old one, they're tough and the meat real dark red. Yes. <laughs> 
He's way off base. <laughs> right in the middle too. He knew where, see? The track. Don't go through the middle. <laughs> Is this a three-wheel track for three-wheelers? Yeah, we uh, we drive down here to hunt. You guys have 2,000 acres for how much? 200. About 2,000. Okay. How many people work the lease? We got uh, 10 of us, and I'll leave this. Now, is there any water access to the property? Say this is what happens. Water. No, this this canal borders and then crosses cuts across ours like I said there's no uh, everybody goes, you know where alligator buy your locks off? Yeah. Uh, that's where all the fishermen put in. Now, how far are we from those locks right now? Probably I know about, uh, probably about nine miles. How far are we from the flats? Probably about eight miles, I guess, and then, okay. yeah. Now, isn't there oil field activity out here? Yeah. In this yeah. area? It's, it's right over in this area over here. It's part of our lease, like I said. It covers some of our 2,000. We can't hunt on it because, you know, the oil field activity, but we still pay and lease on it. <laughs> Well, I get to go in the mineral rights? Probably not, huh? No, uh, the land <laughs> owners do. Well, we just leave them from the land owners. This is a little training deal, or this is just something they covered up? No, I mean, they, they use it for training. Yeah. The guards come over here and they have a shooting range. They shoot that once in a while. Does it always, I mean, the breeze stays this constant, so you always get a good whiff, or is it only yeah. certain times of the year? Well, it all depends. Like, when the wind's out the north, and the houses over there get it. But when it's out the south or southwest. Yeah, I could imagine yeah, it getting here early to go deer hunting and having a nice yeah. cup of coffee and having to smell that. You can't, you can't bring your family back here, because, I mean, it's so repulsive to smell, they don't want to have anything to do with coming back here. So that is their food dump. Yeah, they just dump all their food back here. What's that? The trash can. Thank you. 
good. In the house? Oh, oh man. Yeah, look at it. Everything's Brand fully new automatic. Brand new camp. Did you want to send it to him? No. Take the last picture. I run outside and I hear, I'm, I'm walking over, I have my four wheel, I'm walking over to the other side of the lake. Um, I hear an alarm go off and I panic and I run towards the lake and I get hit again with the chlorine. This is an hour and a half later. It is proven that if it wasn't windy and freezing cold, freezing in the 50 degree range, that this cloud 20 tons was bigger than the barge that sank in Baton Rouge. Um, since then, we've had the pleasure of uh, being interrogated in a six mile area. The evil doers of uh, Pioneer Chloride who released the chemical have investigated us, tried to put judgments on us. Um, mm -hmm. We've lost thousands and thousands of dollars. The uh, amount that- uh, only eats. <laughs> he's really not going to hurt you. He may peck at you, but he won't hurt you. This is Buster. Um, Buster. Uh, Buster. This is one of the birds that was uh, born prior to the release. Afterwards, we did not have any babies. We had no oh. production from our red lorries, from our um, uh, African greys. All the birds that had no problem producing before stopped producing afterwards. They said, oh, no, it was the noise you made. It wasn't that choking chlorine that burned your nose and your eyes. Um, I'm bitter. They said, oh, well, that's a sign that um, uh, you weren't, how does it say, if you're, um, uh, if you're angry, that doesn't justify, um, um, there's some terminology, it's, it's more anger than impact. It's, uh, it's a madness about it. Um, I don't know, uh, the, the gentleman with the human health department, uh, uh, well, we several of us from various parts of the Department of Health and Human Services. Great. I'm from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. The CDC. Well, we are the guinea pigs. <laughs> um, there are uh, uh, when when you run over a dog and you see the dog dead, you know that the car did it that ran over it. It's that clear here. Um, I've had uh, the EPA monitor on Kling Road. When you have clouds, plumes of chemicals come through here, and then you have your birds fluff up, and you then have it two and three times within a. Uh, 30 day period and you have your rose breasted cockatoos come up with the spotty liver syndrome and you then check from the clean air monitor station and you see carbon tetrachloride released and they say oh no it didn't impact your birds that's a, 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 a no relevance well it does impact your birds and if it impacts your birds it's impacting me um, we're dying these, these are the canaries in the cave yeah, except we're the big canaries in the cave, too. And uh, we can cut the birds open after they're dead, but um, how do we prove that it's the people being impacted now? I sure hope our government spends a little money on starting to protect St. Gabriel, Iberville, and Ascension Parish. It's, uh, we're dying.
but uh, I will fight till I'm dead on what the facts, and I think putting the facts out is the way to do it. And these are the birds that we can do the blood tests and the test, and I think we need to put film, cameras out when they're having these plumes and, and stand together, and what is the facts, go to the, the table with the facts. Um, if we can come up here, I can show you all and point you on the directions of different chemical facilities and what direction the, the majority of the plumes come if from. If we could do a, a short tour and then go over and show them the alligator by you sure. if we have Glad enough time. To. I could do that. Y'all want to see the... Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, you know how to run from a house? No, I don't. I get on my back and I run. I'm to My partner, Jim Ragley. How you doing, Jim? This is the aviary. We built the second story after we hit with the chlorine plume. I said, I'll be damned. We're going to put an air monitor on the shelf. The government's not going to help us. We'll do it ourselves and prove the fact. We don't have the money now, but someday we will. <laughs> These are, all the birds bite, by the way, so y'all don't put your fingers near the cages. Um, these right here are black palm cockatoos. They're an uh, endangered bird. They're um, off the coast of Australia. You'll see them in the New York Zoo. Um, they are, uh, all the cages are set up as breeder cages. Uh, we have not had much success. Uh, with the prevailing wind six months of the year being from chemical industry and as often as two to three times a week we smell acid and different chemicals in the air. It's overwhelming. It's hard. Pardon you? Oh yeah. Day in, day out. It's not going to get better from what I can tell. Money is a very powerful justification. Yeah, they, they nest in the barrel. Um, the, uh, we have a number of different types of birds. The smaller the birds, the uh, small-bodied animals show the, the responses. We have uh, the rose-breasted cockatoo that showed the spotty liver disease, which is um, we feel directly contributed to the three releases of the carbon tetrachloride. Y'all can watch y'all step here. We have, um, to your right, there's some eclectic, the green birds, hey, the yellow, and the red ones. Yeah. Hey, Booster. This is a Seriana, leaf lizards. I believe we've upset. Oh, see, this is nothing. They start to scream. <laughs>
some of your voices and you let me know. That's my life. Great. I've been waiting to have you come out. It's wonderful. It's such a, uh, if, if we could spend time doing doing this is, is our hope. Uh, loving the animals and feeding them and, and breeding them. But um, up against the, the placement of where we're at, with all the prevailing winds coming at us, it, it, we're disheartened. Um, we, we've seen impact after impact, and uh, the battle is as big as you know. It's um, as you see people die, we see birds die. Are you, are you just doing them and raising them for your staff, or are you trying to market them? Or? Well, we like to uh, supply the pet industry, but on the other hand, there's not really that many people who are capable of taking care of a bird for 120 years like the uh, green wing call us. So uh, um, it's that as well as uh, possibly having birds to release back into their, their natural habitat. Um, um, so it's, it's, it's going to turn into a research area. We have a second story is all library, and under this roof here is designated for the uh, air monitoring station. And on the third story in the pitched area, that's the nursery. So one day, if we can conquer our financial situation, we will get the air monitoring station up there and do blood tests with the, the, the camera. Uh, filming the plumes and linking the two, the, the impacting of the plume to the blood test to, to what's happening to us here in, in St. Gabriel and, and Geisner area. Um, it's real evident. You can go to 3115 and see the plume hitting St. Gabriel and uh, it's obvious. It's, uh, I just don't know why it's continuing. I, I, I don't, where's our government? In our community, we were, you know, trying to farm, and we had chickens, and we were hatching, you know, baby chicks. And after the, the chemicals in the creek that were exposed to, we had, a, had to give them water out of the creek. The eggs stopped hatching, and once it did hatch, it was born. You know, so it affects. We're not only being impacted by the air, but the gypsum plant, which is on Highway 74 south of the basin. Um, we have what they call it's a time or a popover, and it runs into Jim Bayou right here. And they have it listed. Pardon me? Topover, gypsum from the gypsum pile. It's about a half mile tall. It has a lake on it. Oh, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. You have a detonating. Uh, 20 feet of the uh, 20 foot water table is contaminated, and they are proposing for additional sites to put additional gypsum. The madness, they haven't conquered their problem in the first place, and they're continuing to impact us. Where's our government? I'm, I'm, it's going to take the people to stand up, and uh, I, I think litigation and proving the facts, and it's uh, or we're all going to continue dying. And I, I when you see your your neighbors die one at a time, it's uh, you 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 have very little uh, um, time to debate on the uh, the factor on oh well look how many jobs and how much money oh no 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 you can't buy my life it's um it hurts um, I I my dad went to war my uncle went to war and I was raised as an American and. I, like most families, were naive. I truly thought that people did care for their fellow man. And I know my community cared. I know St. Gabriel cared. But industry seems to um, look at the dollar. That's all they look at. Forget about lives. They look at dollars. Well, in my immediate family, I have had four grandchildren lost in the last two years. And his parents were still alive. And they were still And the doctors tell young men in the home that it's normal. First one or two pregnancies to be That's unreal. That is not normal. You can't get a doctor in this ear. A patient that I give in the ear. To tell you anything wrong with those plants. Those plants retain those doctors. Exactly. When we were here with the chlorine, oh no, I can see you in about eight months. The lawyer used to say you we can't get a lawyer to fight the plants because they hold them in the no, we're, we're, in the 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 house. House. we're in a serious That's situation. Yeah. Something's got to change. But what people don't realize is it's not just here. No, it's not. Yes. I mean, this That's is horrible. But it's been done this way in the world. Nobody's trying well, to do anything that except crashing people. 
Like us, we are seeing it affect us. Well, and know that when, when, when you live a naive life as an American loving your family, and then you're poisoned, and it shocks you, and then you find yourself standing with other people who are dying and losing their families, it is horrible what's happening everywhere else. But I know that guys who are in St. Gabriel, we will go to war. This, we will not die without a fight. But it's, I just feel you on the naive part. We trusted. We trusted the company. Yeah. We trusted the city officials. We trusted the government because we were taught that that's what we're supposed to do. You, you know, you live in a society where you've got all these protections built in out here, and you go and you cast your vote for the people that you think are protecting you and taking care of you. And you turn around and find out that they're part of the problem. You look at this campaign, this closure, and that's why they're trying to keep it a secret. You see why they're not trying to tell the, the, the supposed ministry from old campaign. It's the bottom line, the green book. Well, I got we, a little button now where it says people, not profit. We can fight them with the facts, <laughs> and we can take them to court, and we can prove the facts, and and and. If we're wrong, we're wrong. But if we're right, our government better be standing with us, and they should have provided the money to prove it in the first place. And why am I spending my life and Leroy his life to try to protect ourselves? There's a serious problem, and, and we're going to, uh, the people going to stand up. They're going to make a difference. Uh, I refuse to be a victim any longer. I, I, I've been living this for years, and uh, I don't open my windows at night out of fear. My dream isn't my dream anymore. It's a nightmare. That's wrong. But they're in trouble because the people are bigger than their dollar bill. We'll win. Eventually. Yeah, we we had to go down first. Huh? Yeah, we had died, but maybe the grandchildren won't. My grandchildren already are. Well, we have to hope for some not to. I'm not stopping. It's wrong though. And it's easy to prove the fact when you have a cloud of carbon tetrachloride coming over my birds and they're fluffed up and you then see spotty liver disease, tell me there's not a link for that. Or chlorine and then the birds that did produce stop producing and there's, oh, there's no linkage, I'll be damned. How dare you? What, what right do they have to impact what God gave us? This is my air. This is my water. I'm not going to be a victim and our government better stand up. This is America. We're not in, in uh, Nazi Germany where you, you take advantage and it's a sickness. I don't know how we got so lost in, in protection of our, our human health and, and the environment. I, uh, and here we're trying to preserve the 13,000 acres so we can have a reflection. I don't know if we'd be here to even have a reflection. But we'll try and keep fighting. Thank God for Leroy and Amos and Chris Godet and Mary Lee and Willie and you, Miss po Poche. I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, we're, we're, we're a little bitter at being murdered, though. Uh, I guess what we're hopeful for is seeing the kinds of united community actors that you're putting together here as well. So the opportunity for us in one day to see Amos Saberite's community, to see your community in San Gabriel come here and see what you're trying to do here, providing an evidence for what proves of toxic contamination can do to communities is something that very few other communities have been able to achieve. So while you may be bitter, you also should be hopeful because you're building a unity that needs to be had if we're going to really be able to successfully handle the solution problems. Well, we are hopeful. We have never stopped. It, it is a joy to see Leroy and all the people standing at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning to stop a hazardous waste permit who wants to run their stormwater runoff through their community and our community with no concern except the dollar. Uh, is that we, we, we became friends by realizing this man standing on the right thing by my side. Um, it's for the human race. So um, it's some heroes right here. Those values burning right there. We're all inspired yeah. by If y'all can come, I can show you an aerial photo of a basin and we walk through my home and see uh, a couple birds on the deck.
the, at this moment, we have the Country Club of Louisiana, which is to be taken an interstate through here, and then they want to develop these areas, make that money. Well, we've had problems where St. Gabriel, Iberville Parish, Ascension flows through this one canal, and then from this canal into the locks of Alligator Bayou. When Bayou Manshack is high, this basin cannot drain and water backs up. Well, when they develop, that means that more water is it's going to take longer for the Bayou Manchac to go down so this basin can drain. We have tens of thousands of acres of surface water running into here being held till this can go down. They want to bring more water here, and if this water ever comes over this road at the 16-foot level, I don't know how deep the facilities will be, but it will be the biggest boat hall that y'all will read about and hear about wherever you are from. And there it seems to be, the community is trying to educate the officials, the, the liabilities or the, 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 the environmental catastrophe that could happen, not only by this oil field that keeps running into the basin and runs through southeast Louisiana and contaminates Manchac, Morapal, Pontchartrain, and then into the Gulf. You wonder why you have a dead zone with these type of facilities that are flooding and running in through here. Um, if this, and then this backs up into the gypsum pile, uh, and they call it the top overs, and then all this runs into through southeast Louisiana, we eat these fish and crawfish. It's not only impacting us, it's impacting the habitat. Um, the, I can go on and on, but on the good note, thank God, we, the community in uh, Iberville, um, St. Gabriel, uh, Warren Birthlot, and so many people stood together and they helped us preserve 1,200 acres of old growth trees. Um, they were going to clear cut them. Uh, this is um, from the uh, science lab in Lafayette. Jim Ragland, my partner, and uh, Kathy Wiltermute, a wetland delineator, went there and got these aerial photos. We have photos from 1958 to, this is a 1995 photo of the basin. Uh, these are some of the trees that we have preserved. Um, this is in the basin. We are, I just got off the phone a few minutes ago about the uh, uh, families who want around the rest of the basin who would like to donate the land to preserve. Uh, we're in great hope that we're going to be pre preserving this. We now own the waterway from the center of the bayou of Alligator Bayou on both sides. So if you contaminate Iberville, you're contaminating my property now. And I own that. And that's Alligator Bayou. That's where we're going to be going. Um, what they do is they say the water from the gypsum plant runs into state waters. This is a map from Allied Signal. I believe it's the owner of the gypsum plant. And this is where we're at right here. This is... This is the gypsum pile. This is my home right here, and this is Jim Bayou. So it has topovers, and it runs into the swamp. They say, oh, it's low radioactivity. So I don't in remember inviting anybody to contaminate my waterways. They're my waterways. I don't care how much it is. I don't want any of it. The, um, the situation is dire, but thank God you are here, and I think we can turn it around. We have to look at uh, how can we reclaim the area and, and bring it back and, and without a long-term fight. Um, this is, uh, we have people fishing in here. Uh, we need to stop the flooding and the contamination and industry needs to get on board real quick. Uh, they are the culprit and have been. In 1958, there has been a chemical spill that killed enormous amount of trees in here and nobody did anything to them. It's time that they stand up and, and are held for what they do, not only to the, the land, but to the people around them. How much is the land prior to this? The land right here is 60 acres I bought personally. I bought five acres for $265,000 to landlock it to prevent the clear cutting. I own that personally. I am opening that up. I charged a big dollar of three dollars to allow people to vote through here. Uh, everybody can afford three dollars to go in here. We have canoe rentals. All the navigable waterways are open to all the people. This is our educational system. This is the future. This is where the kids need to be brought. This is under the EPA and the Corps Engineers protection right here along with the local community so it cannot be poached. 
Um, we are in great hopes once we ensure this, when we'll walk down the levee, that we'll be able to let everyone walk down the levee, but we must have all the liabilities taken care of. In the future, all this will be protected for the habitat. The people will be second to it. They can enjoy the waterways and go on some of the lands, but we must not impact the habitat that feeds the species. And uh, that is a priority. This is the only green space around. We have massive development taking place. Um, we can have low impact to this area without destroying it. And this is the, this is the area that we, we have a number of facilities that drain in here. This is where we need to study environmental science. Uh, we can do the wetland delineation. We can get Ms. Florence Robinson to, to, to educate some of the children on biology. This is the asset. This is Louisiana's future. Instead of trying to clear cut it and make it a landfill like it was proposed years ago, we need to preserve it. And we need to turn back the, the industry and say, no, these state waters, you're not able to pollute our, our waters because not only are they state waters, but they're Frank Boniface waters, and you're going to be held liable. Um, I don't know how we can all position ourselves to make sure these people were held responsible, but I urge everybody to, to get a hand of the situation personally before they continue slowly dying in our community. How are the universities with your colleges We have. We've got in touch with Mr. Paul Tomplay and Mr. Charlie Flying, and uh, we're in great hopes of uh, calling on the educational uh, uh, LSU and Southern and Florence with, has been a big help. And let these areas, we propose for the Punch Train Levy Board to be a research and developmental center and bring the classes out to Louisiana and let's look at the facts, let's look at the oil field, let's look at the high water when it's backing up into industry and let's test the waters, let's test the fish before we eat them. Um, these are the answers and it's the facts. And then the prevailing winds and let's, let's put more air monitors out here and, and maybe everybody needs a canary and uh, a, a, a vet to run to when we have a plume. Everybody needs a, a VCR to, to document these plumes coming over their homes. Uh, there is a lot that can be done when you, you stand together. Uh, the, I think the fact brought to the government, how can they argue when they see it? Um, I had a chance to uh, meet several people from the Tulane Xavier Environmental Center over the past several days. Have you engaged them at all? I have uh, met a few of uh, the people, Ms. Orr, with Lean uh, in New Orleans, but no, I haven't. We have truly been. Um, overwhelmed by the, uh, the onslaught of this as well as the onslaught of the air uh, and the litigation that we have with Pioneer Chloride and them investigating us and them flying in attorneys and, and saying, oh no, it's, it's you. You're the, you know, you're just trying to get something for nothing. So um, we've been battling the people who have poisoned us. And then we have massive clear cutting that's been taking place here. So we're trying to save something that is precious, and uh, we are, we can do no more. We're, we're exhausted. Um, I wish that um, we had more time to meet other people, but uh, it, we're just overwhelmed. Um, well, one thing we've you. talked to a number of communities about is surveillance systems for health surveillance and also for environmental exposure. But in your situation, it's sort of ecosystem surveillance. So people who might be knowledgeable about the fish in the area and the safety and security of populations, of course, the safety and security of the reptiles in the area, all of whom provide a bellwether of how the ecosystem as a whole is doing. I, I, I'll get information to you about that environmental center because there may be people who would be a great assistance in starting to develop projects that would keep a longer term finger on the pulse the ecosystem resources. Oh, great. Yeah, well, we'd sure appreciate it. There's, um, we're all a little burden. I bet every one of us have a horrifying story. So it's... Uh, well, the reason why we're, we're hopeful is that's one of my connections is the university system is because younger people coming through such systems have a great need for demonstrating their competencies and study in order to be indoctrinated into the field. And the graduate student projects that could involve study here provides a basis of longer term information at universities that would say, here's what we knew in 1996, here's what we know in 1999, 
is there any difference in improvement to the situation? If we're going after bar restoration, we have to establish benchmarks now in order to demonstrate our progress in the utility sure. of those restoration efforts. You betcha. Well, fortunately, we have the Clean Air Monitoring Station within a mile from here, and so these EPA funds must continue to protect our community so we can document uh, the, um, the basin is a wonderful area to have a benchmark and, and see what's going to take place in the future. I would love to see a uh, fire tower on 3115 showing the of chemicals going over St. Gabriel and then continue the air monitoring out there. I would like to see more EPA air monitors in St. Gabriel and, and Godwin area. This is where we need more uh, money. This is our, uh, and then let the, 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 the students study this area. The, I, I know there's a number of areas in the United States with problems, but it is horrible to see Frank, on a rainy night. Frank, you problem after 10 o'clock between 10 and 3? The roar, the roar, and the fire in the sky. Oh, it's rough. I go out there, I was on 3115, and I had my truck washed, and I called the DEQ to come out and test the air because some friends of mine, Marcy, called and said their horses are, are looking bad and the air is real bad. And uh, they said, well, I'm sorry, I don't know where 3115 is. That's the men in charge of protecting us. Um, the plumes were so thick, it was, it was, it was like a... a